It is another fantastic day here in Fun King Garage, and today I'm back working on the Fummins project. It's time to get the intake and intercooler piping laid out and to figure out how it's going to fit in there. But fair warning, when this was filmed, I wasn't feeling well. So the beginning of this video, I didn't do any talking. I didn't have a voice, but that's probably a good thing. Anyway, join me in this uh, little montage with a little bit of music behind it as I try to figure out where I'm going to put the piping and how I'm going to route it to the intake. I know that it doesn't look like I got much done on that intake pipe, but I have to shift gears real quick and shift over to the intercooler piping just to make sure that the two are not going to conflict with one another.
All right, so what you just watched me do was uh, cut the upper intercooler piping, the factory Ford one, or uh, the hot side. And the reason being is, is I'm going to work into making the factory Ford pipe tie into the factory Dodge pipe. And you can see that it's a little, the, the Ford pipe's a little higher than the Dodge pipe. So we're going to jog it down and my my thought on this is that i'm going to use the the factory the remainder of the factory ford pipe which is here and hopefully i can get uh, a couple of the of the what i believe to be 45 degree angles uh and and just kind of jog it down that it's about three inches or so and if I can drop it down that that far and a little bit off to a little bit off to the side, then in theory it should work out pretty well. So let's see how that how that goes. Oh, we're in it now. No, oh, that pig rolling would have been the way to do this, but I don't have enough seat time yet. I'm going to clean that up. We'll check it for leaks. So after pressure testing the intercooler pipe and patching up a few small pinholes, it was time to shift back to the intake piping. Okay, so I managed to find a good tight radius 4 inch 90 degree steel elbow for the intake. The one that came from DCS was fine, but it just didn't quite fit the way I wanted it to. And I'll show you all the details on this when it's, when it's said and done. Right now what I'm worried about is blocking off the end of the factory air box. And for that, I made this template out of some thin plywood and I've shaped it and sized it to where I like it. And today I'm going to transfer this into a high temperature plastic. All right, so this is the high temp plastic that I'm going to be using and it's a scrap from a different project. But I'm going to transfer my template to this using some double-sided double tape and uh, and a wood router. So let's hope that goes well. Now that that's stuck down, I'm going to use a saw and clip off all of the bulk of the extra before I run it through the router. And I believe this is called uh, Altum plastic. To make sure I get the hole centered for the, the hole saw to go through the new piece, and that way I don't have to cut that part out with the router, I can do it with the hole saw. I took the bit out of the 
middle of the hole saw and I'm using this one which is the same size just way longer and now I'm using the hole saw as a guide and that's now given me a mark to know where to, to run the hole saw through. Okay so this is a uh, flush trim bit with a ball bearing uh, on just a homemade table that I made a long time ago that's it's real quick and easy to set up and then I don't have to drag the whole router table out and uh, I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'd say that worked pretty well. I uh, I had my doubts because cutting that plastic on the uh, miter saw was a little bit tough, but uh, it routed beautifully. So, yes. All right, so I know I said that I was gonna use the hole saw to cut through this, but uh, I started it and, well, no, nope, it didn't like that. Uh, the, the hole saw grabbed that thing and just about like jerked it right out of my hand. So I ended up drilling out the hole to three quarters of an inch so I can get it over the top of this. And then uh, we're going to kick the router on and I'm just gonna route that hole out. The router cut this plastic so beautifully. We're just gonna let her have it. Okay, that I didn't consider, and uh, good thing I had my safety goggles on. Could have got me in the eye, but uh, <laughs> that was fun. Let me go ahead and fire it back up and clean this hole up a little bit. That's gonna work out swimmingly. Now, I do still have to put a rabbit in that hole because I want the, the filter to actually sit a little bit into this material because it is 5 16 of an inch thick. Uh, so I'll go ahead and rabbit that out and then we'll test fit it on the truck. Okay, so I took a round over bit and went around the whole thing so that it's nice and smooth and no sharp edges. Not that that was really super necessary, but it does make for a nicer piece. Now this fits right over the top of the filter like this and then I took a couple pieces of aluminum angle and just pop riveted them into the side of the box so that the ultimate slides down in there like so and holds the filter in tightly and the factory lid goes back on just like that. Now we just got to get it into the truck and get the pipe cut to be the right size. Well, as you can see, it uh, actually fits pretty well. 
I'm, I'm pleased with the way that it turned out. Um, if, if you're interested, this was the elbow I ended up using. It's a 41474. And I can't remember who made this, but I will try to uh, find it again and put a link to it in the description. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a tight, it's a four inch radius instead of the typical ones, which were like six and a half, seven, eight inch radius. So they were long flowing. That's a little bit tighter. Now I still do have to come up with some kind of a mount for the, uh, mass airflow sensors, the Cummins and the Ford, but, uh, we'll get those in next. Yes. Next up. But unfortunately, that means the next episode. Yes, this is a to be continued episode because there was so much detail and build that went into this intake that I would have either had to cut a bunch of stuff out or this episode would have been terribly long and I didn't want either one of those two. So I am going to ask for you to come back in the next episode to watch the finale build of the intake. I do thank each and every one of you for being here and according to my analytics, most of you are returning viewers but are not yet subscribed. So let's take a second and fix that right now and just hit that subscribe button. You see, it helps the channel so much and it makes me warm and fuzzy inside. That's why we ask you to do it is it really is important. Now, there's a lot of progress still going on with the truck. There's other projects that have to be taken care of very, very soon. So there is a lot going on here in Fun King Garage and I'm gonna share each and every bit of that with you but not right now. Now it's time for me to take my bag, hit the road, and move on to my next adventure. Thanks for watching.